All right, uh, I guess we should start because I'm pressed for time. I only get 30 minutes to do that. Um, thank you all for coming. I'm Nadir Khan. I'm an Ajax coach at SNS, SNS Technologies. And before I worked there, I used to be in the offshore industry, so I was fortunate enough to work with and train teams in Egypt, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, US, UK, India, and now Australia. Um, and the way I've uh, broken this talk down is there are two parts. I'm going to share my experience and my observations over the past six or seven years. It won't take that long. And in the second bit, we'll do the experiment. And I would need your help to, uh, with the experiment, otherwise it won't work. Um, all right, so all boring stories start with the manifesto. And don't worry. <laughs> I won't bore you with that because I'm only interested in one of these values, one of the four. Now, when this manifesto was signed in 2001, we've come a long way. Um, we were talking about new tools like Team Foundation, like Rally. We we're talking about code smells, continuous integration, evolutionary designs. But one thing that is has been least talked about in the last 11 years, a bit over 11 years is the top one, the forgotten one. That at the end of the day, it's humans who build software. It's, it's us who develop products. So we focus too much on this and why it has helped us. Um, we've sort of forgotten the plot. We're, we're not interacting as much. Although uh, today was very heartening because all the talks, especially in this room, were about collaboration, interaction, and individuals. So I'm here to talk about the human factor, um, and that's what the time bomb experiment is about as well. And I'll get to it when we get there. All right. My first question, um, and maybe we are, but it's still worth asking. Are we building projects around motivated individuals? So when we go to work, do we see people excited? Are we as excited as them? And, and even the second question, are we giving our team the environment support they need? Now, these were the basic principles, but again, it's worth asking. And I ask this because it's not just a statement for managers, but it's for the team members as well. Um, the support that they require, if I see someone unhappy in my team, it's my duty to somehow ask and find out what's going on with them. And only then we would be able to interact and work towards the common goal. So, just by show of hands, does this sound familiar? Standards are such a waste of time. You already communicate throughout the day. Why do we be sad at all? I don't see the point. Just one, all right? That's, that's rare. All right, I'll, I'll go through a few symptoms um, that I've observed, and that's just my opinion. And, and we'll ask you if uh, you've experienced these symptoms in your team or in your line of work or if you've heard any of these. Reporting to the Scrum Master. By show of hands, how many have you noticed that? Picking the same spot to stand every day, right? This might necessarily not be a bad problem, <laughs> but, but I'll tell you why it is somewhat of an issue. Because if I pick a spot, then a uh, dysfunctional stand-up would be, I pick a spot and I just wait my turn. I'm not even listening to what others are saying. All right, it's my turn. I regurgitate what I prepared for before coming to the stand-up. And then, that's it, I shut myself down. And then the rest of the team uh, blurred out whatever their updates are, and that's it. And that's why picking up a spot and standing there every day is, is harmful. Um, and it may not necessarily be a bad thing, and I'll talk about it in a bit. Um, multiple conversations at a time, show of hands. All right. Going off track with non-project related discussions. All right, now we're, we're seeing some momentum. All right, I'm not the only crazy one. Going into solution mode. Yeah, more hands. People speaking softly. Now with that, uh, people, their intentions are pure, they wanna tell you guys what they achieved the day before and, and what their blockers are. But because they're timid, you know, they, they, they don't speak up, 
loudly. And for the rest of the team, it's just 10 minutes of silence, right? So if, if you have a lot of soft-spoken people in the team, everyone's like waiting their turn. They don't even, because they're being polite, they don't say, you know, kind of speak up. And they just wait their turn. And in the end, the stand-ups start to become long. And that's when you start losing, uh, see the value in the stand-ups. And that's just one of the symptoms. That's not the only cause. So long stand-ups, show of hands. Not many. Command and control. Um, no, I am no stand-up. I've observed that. Um, there was once where I took over a team as an iteration manager, um, and I was shadowing another iteration manager, and he called in sick. He sent everyone an email, I'm not coming in, so no stand-up. And, and that was a first for me, but you know, I thought I'd throw it in as well. Awkward moments of silence and looking around. So, and, and the reason I'm focusing on stand-ups is that's one of the key uh, discussion points during a day where you're supposed to interact. There's also retrospective showcases, reviews, project postmortems, or just normal collaboration during the day. But I only have half an hour, so I'm focusing on stand-ups. But that's going to feed into the experiment eventually. So awkward moments of silence. Um, here what I'm trying to say is, again, because it's seen as a status supporting mechanism, you do your update, and then everyone's looking at you. All right, is he done? Or does he have anything else to say? And then we figure, all right, maybe he's done. And then you start. And you lose another four or five seconds of just awkward silence. And that means your stand-ups aren't working. That means you're not interacting. That means you're not adding value to each other's time. Not coming to the stand-ups prepared. I forgot what I did yesterday. Inexcusable. Show of hands. Very right, few. Oh, OK. Um, stating the obvious, my task is in progress. Well, we know it's in progress, but it's sitting on in progress. So if on your wall it's in progress, and, you, and that's all you have to say, it's in progress then that doesn't help the team. Um, which takes me to the next point, the cause. The biggest misconception about the stand-up is that it's a status reporting mechanism. And the emphasis that um, is further amplified by the emphasis Scrum puts on the three questions and that you ask each of the team members. And if, and if you go around a circle answering those three questions one person at a time, it does end up looking like a, a, a status report. And that's what you don't want. That's, that's an anti-pattern. That's exactly what we want to um, not do, basically. And as a consequence, there is demoralization. And, and it spirals out of control. So it's a, it's a snowball effect. Demoralized people, they started blaming each other. And in the end, you completely lose the plot. What were you working towards? <laughs> Well, this guy was confused for very different reasons, but you know, <laughs> it's a fitting picture. <laughs> yes. Just in terms of that, blaming. Is that uh, if you go back to the last slide? Is that always the case that that's an anti pattern, or is that like sometimes the questions are good to prompt the discussion? Absolutely, but the way they're phrased. So Scrum says, ask these three questions. Yesterday's weather. Um, what are you going to do today? And what's in my way? If only you rephrase the question, it's going to bring in more value. So instead of asking, what did I do yesterday? I worked yesterday. That would be the easy and stupid answer. But if you rephrase it, what did we achieve yesterday? So I worked eight hours, but what did I achieve? Am I any closer to the iteration goal than I was yesterday? And that's bringing value to the stand-up. And also listening. So if, if you're just taking turns and, and blurting out updates, and if others aren't listening, you may as well type an email and answer those three questions and send it to everyone. Why come to a wall and spend 10 minutes? And that's why it starts to look like a waste of time. That's, that's, and that's what the experiment is about as well. Um, so what to do? Go back to our basics. Stand-ups are a key representation of synchronization during a daily cycle. Um, it's for taking a pause, stepping back, which is inspect, all right, where are we at? This was our iteration goal. This is where we were yesterday. What have we achieved? Inspect. And then as a team decide, so it's not just, this is what I worked on, and the other person, this is what I'm working on, and this is the blocker. It doesn't help. As a team decide, all right, here's where we are. 
are we straying away from the best path? Because if we do, it's going to snowball very quickly into bigger issues. And, and that's what the standards are for. So as a team, you adapt. So you have to put on your listening ears during the standard. And if you do both, you're communicating, you're talking, and the others are listening, and they're providing feedback, and you're listening, only then will those tenures work. Those tenures are supposed to set the rest of your day. So if you spend those 10, 15 minutes in the morning, the rest of your day should be super productive. If you, if you use them right. Otherwise, yeah, you're wasting those 15 minutes. You might as well go for a coffee. Um, so let's see if even the best of us, do we exhibit these traits? Now, we, we did have a few hands up, and I'm gonna bring out, so this is gonna be scary, uh, a Pakistani Muslim with a time bomb in his hands. <laughs> Run while you can. <laughs> yeah, you've got your money's worth now. Um, so I need 10 volunteers for this. And these are candles, so it won't go off. <laughs> can I have team, uh, 10 volunteers? Yes. All right, excellent. Another Pakistani. Yes. <laughs> now for this, I would require you to take off your name tags, because that's going to be one of the ones. And it has to be 10, otherwise it won't work. It does, if you don't have to have a certain skill set, you just have to be human. And I guess, yeah, all of you qualify for that, so. All right, one, two, four, three. Yeah, we're doing a stand-up. Okay. It's just a normal stand-up. Okay. Four, five, the more the better. Come on, two. Six, <laughs> seven, seven. Eight. We're gaining momentum. I is it I already know several people in the group will have not work. Um yeah. you have to take your name tag off. That's a good point. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um we'll see. And that's why I'm, I'm calling it an experiment. So this is the first time I'm doing it in, in, with, with such a large group. Sure. I've done it with my scrum teams, or, or my teams. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, if you can just... You know you want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, we have full quorum. Thank you. <clears throat> So a bomb is about to go off in five minutes, and all of the team members must do something in order to defuse it. And I'll talk about the rules um, in a bit. Do what? Tell everyone, not just yet. So again, the, the standard stand-up, so one at a time. Tell everyone your name, your profession, if you were to print a t-shirt for yourself, what would it say and why? And just to give you an idea, you'll have to turn towards the... This is, for example, my example of what a t-shirt could say. If at first you don't succeed, don't try skydiving. <laughs> so, when you're giving your update, talk as if you're talking to the person standing farthest from you. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're talking to him. It says that you're speaking to him. And then once you've repeated steps one, two, and three, so you've told your name, your profession, if you were to print a t-shirt, what would it say, and why, you have, there has to be a why. And then once you've done that, and you're talking loud enough so that the person on the other end can hear it, you pass the ball to the next person instead. Now, here's the important part. Just do this first. If the bomb goes off before everyone has had a chance to speak, the people who don't get a chance, who did get a chance to speak, they die. <laughs> but the survivors finish the stand-up nonetheless. <laughs> All right. Any questions about the rules? No? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, you don't make it up. You tell me. Because you don't actually die either. <laughs> there we go. I mean, I organize conferences for a living in Paris. No, I don't. I'm a guy who does this type of thing, and my t shirt. No, no, so what's your real name? Ah, Ed. Ed, yeah, so, okay. Yeah. And if what you were to print a t shirt, uh, what would it say and why? It would say, do you like stuff? And why? 
because it's set quite a few seasons. Okay, cool. Yeah, good enough. Yep. Okay, I'm Gabby. I'm an energy manager at Greece. And my teacher would say, Eek, I'm holding a bum. <laughs> why? Because I'm. I am. <laughs> um, I'm Gavin. I'm a QA. Um, my t shirt would have lots of exclamation marks on it because I like to be very blunt and very exuberant. <laughs> Say why not? Because I get a lot of questions about why. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Rob. I'm a testosterone and seek. My t-shirt would just be a big question. <laughs> and why is that? Because that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. And the bomb didn't go off. So the mortality rate was 100 percent. I would have gone off, I think, in the next three to four seconds. Now. My observations, in fact, I'll let you guys, all right, we got the message. Yeah. What, what did you guys observe when, when these guys were doing their updates? Was there anything you noticed in particular? I made a couple of observations, but I'll talk about them in a bit. It was more uncomfortable at the beginning, but became more comfortable yes. as it got to the end. Yeah. The Y was covered a lot of the time. Good one. Yes. I couldn't hear one of the people. All right. Yes. So some of the rules weren't followed. So speak as if you're speaking to the person farthest from you. That was one of them. The why was rushed. And this is what the time bomb, the, the, the reason why I initially designed this experiment was at the end of the day, this is a prop, but what it signifies is everyone's time. We, we should value everyone else's time. Um, but in doing that, the, the result is you start rushing uh, and, and you stop adding value all over again. And that was the first thing I noticed when I first did this experiment. So I'm going to do another one. It's pretty similar to the first one, but with a small change in rules. So since you, no one died, uh, one of the rules was you would need to switch places. So the survivors uh, start the stand-up stand the second time but your mortality rate was 100%. <laughs> and, and the second observation, and we'll see if I'm correct or not, was when people were talking about what they'll print on their t-shirts or giving their updates, some of them were trying to think of what they, they will say when it's their turn. They weren't even listening to what was being said. Um, again, that takes the value out of the standard. Um, that is not interacting. That's broadcasting. You can do that over a radio. And that's what the experiment was about. So let's change the rules a little and try the experiment again and see what the mortality rate is. Um, and the new experiment, you'll all have to look over there. So this time you recall a person's name, his profession, his t-shirt slogan, and why did he choose that? <laughs> and talk as if, so the second rule, you didn't follow it the first time, let's try and follow it this time. Talk as if you're speaking to the person farthest from you. If you can't recall any of the four things, you die. Forget the bomb, you just die of a heart attack or whatever, you know? So you pick anybody? What's that? Anybody? You just well, I'll, I'll pick the people, yeah. yeah. Oh, you tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I know some of you know some of <laughs> If the bomb goes off before everyone has had a chance to speak, same rule. Uh, for those who don't speak, they die. All right. 
this time we'll start from here. I want to go just sit there. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> sit down, yeah, that's what you do. Like that, good. All right, you're next. I'll try to pass the ball. Yeah, I'll pass the ball. Gentleman here. Oh, this one? Yes. Uh, can I read the first name? So I'll sit down. Are you go? Yeah. I'll give it a try. Um, person standing next to you. Oh, God. Uh, okay. His name's Nick. Um, Close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you should know what he does, but yeah, anyway. Uh, he's Ed. Yes. And he is our head of conference. Yes. Um, but that's not what he does. Not really, but, but that's what he says. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. What else? What did his t-shirt say? Um, <coughs> I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Person standing next to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we did it once, uh, but let's try, try again. again. Yeah. <laughs> Still not. Standing next to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you still have to do the t-shirt. Right? Why? That's not what he said. Okay. Thank you. Why do you remember? Because he wants to set him up. All right, now hand it, hand it over. Yeah. You had to stay up. Right? But you took someone else's time, but that's fine. Yeah. See. Right. yeah, go for it. Um, person standing next to you. <laughs> Everyone dies anyway. <laughs> All right. Observations. I know. <laughs> yeah. Should have bought a more expensive one. Yes. Or even the person standing next to them. So. Because you're constantly thinking of what you want to say, you want to look good, you want to look smart when you open your mouth, you don't, you stop listening to everyone. And that's what happens at the stand-ups. Oh my god, I have to say something at the stand-up. I remember what I did yesterday, so I'm going to just make something up, just so that I don't look stupid. Yeah, there's an observation here. If it's not directly relevant to our people in place yeah. right now, yeah. there's no point remembering it. So being an efficient human being, you don't remember it because it's not helpful. Yes, but at least the person standing next to you, I mean, you could have at least... <laughs> See what I mean? I'm not asking the name of 10 people, I'm just asking one. Sure. Mostly the person standing next to you. But if you were in a true scrum, and yes. you had 10 people, you may only focus in on the thing you actually need to know to be able to do your next seven hours. But you should, and that's, that's the whole point. You're taking that time off your day, otherwise you could have just paired with that person because that work is relevant to you and that person. But you you regroup just 10 minutes for the day so that you look at where we're at, have you made any progress since yesterday, and how far are we from our goal? Um, and that's what the true value, the first value that I showed, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. We are so reliant on continuous and oh, the bill's not working, the light's red, you know, we have to do something. Yes, you have to do something, but go to the underlying cause. Why is it happening? And I'll share some stats. You guys actually did really good in the first round. This was the first time I had 100% mortality. Yes, thank you so much. So here are the stats. So this is the pre-bomb mortality. So this is when you don't remember anyone's name or what he said, and you don't have your listening gear on. And this is when the bomb goes off. You took everyone else's time. So this is an apparent trend. You guys started there. So you guys did pretty well. In fact, you guys started here. Um, so the trend goes up because the way this experiment is, is uh, developed, uh, the more you pass the bomb along, and if it explodes, um, the more people die. Even though that's good progress that you were able to move all the way to, to you know, person six or seven or eight, um, but we still penalize. You still took time. And there will come a point where everyone
everyone's insane. They know what they have to do. They come in prepared. And because you die, you switch spots as well. So people don't pick the same spot every day. That's one of the things I want to build into the experiment. Um, you're supposed to speak as if you're talking to the person standing farthest from you. Even if you're a soft-spoken person, you're bound to speak a bit louder. So through this experiment, we try and amplify so that we can observe and do something about it. All the symptoms that I talked about. And that's what the experiment was. All right, so when we go back to work, we will agree, I guess, that everyone speaks at the stand-up, but the real job is to listen, to inspect, and adapt. Thank you. We have questions. We have two minutes, but I think, yes. In the experiment, if you gave the 10 people a couple of minutes to go through um, their name, you, you, you basically got to report your name yes. you know, and the t-shirt. Yes. You would come prepared as you would in a normal stand-up, yes. and then allow yourself to listen to the other. But that would only take care of one of the symptoms, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a bit biased, right. so that we could highlight more symptoms than just coming prepared to the stand-up. Uh -huh. I want to see if people are listening. Yeah. So the second time around, you should have been prepared, because you know the rules, yeah. you heard what people said, and I changed the question so that now you don't have to just repeat what you But we had to repeat what was done the first time when we yes. were in, in, the, in, the, in the mucks, trying to think of our own yes. stuff, if you know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. So I think that little bit of pre preparation might actually And work. it takes practice, that's what I'm saying. So when we go back uh, on Monday, mm -hmm. that's what we have to bring to the work. So we should start listening to what the other people are, are saying. But stand-up is also a platform where you help the other person. It's an opportunity for a person to put his hand up. I'm struggling. Carry me out. Otherwise, you're just talking to the cards, and that's it. So, how apart from you know the time bomb experiment, which yes. is very effective, but how how do you track that people are doing that? That people they're coming, they're standing, they're thinking on the spot, they're not really listening. You know, how how can you pick that up? Well, they should be saying. Um, here's the problem, and someone else should be saying, all right, let's take it offline. And then you make sure they do take it offline. But if they don't have a problem, it, yeah. just, it does become, well, this is what I do, this is what, you know, this is what I'm doing. Well, again, rephrasing the question. So it shouldn't be, this is what I did yesterday, this is what I achieved, so that the team has a sense of achievement as well. But, yeah, but they're still, like, like because, you know, I've been in towns and, and they do, they, you know, and you see people and they kind of glaze over and, you know. Well, it shows from the body language. This is what I observed and, and, yeah. and we were able to replicate. So if, if people are looking down or elsewhere yeah. and not looking at the person speaking, then... Yeah. And, and the other thing is, if they are feeling pressure of giving a status update, they will do that. Yeah. But that's not what you should be harnessing. So yeah. if, if they're just thinking about what they're supposed to say, then they won't be listening. That's the pressure you, you're supposed to take off your teammates. Even at the, at the beginning, if it takes 20 minutes, that's fine. Because time is the least important thing out of this. It's the rest of the day that you're planning for the standard. Thank you, right on the money. <laughs> um, your name was? Sake. And I died. Yeah. <laughs> Sake over there uh, made a request before the session. He's doing a survey. Um, and it's uncannily close to the first value that I talked about, so if you can help them out. Um, thank you, appreciate it.